so we're working on the Eclipse OMR tree interpreter. You might think OMR stands for something. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, this is Alex. Alex. And our mentors are Daryl and Andrew, who is still in Toronto. Or rather, was never planning to win. <laughs> uh, so, a language runtime for Java looks something like this. There's Java source code, uh, and it compiles things, the storage collection, and it looks really similar for Ruby and also JavaScript. So, OMR, the tree interpreter, will be used for a uh, cross language uh, compiler uh, sort of idea. And Yeah, so we realized there's a problem with, uh, so with some languages, investment in one runtime has close to zero carryover to other runtimes. So if we can generalize it to a cross-language uh, compiler, we can focus a lot of effort on that and improve all languages simultaneously. Uh, this becomes more and more important as, we, as a lot of companies move to uh, working cloud. So this is uh, the OMR compiler process. So basically, we take uh, some bytecode from uh, any languages, say Python or Java or anything, and then we translate that into an intermediate language. And in OMR tree, that representation is uh, a tree, which uh, has many advantages for optimization. And this is the optimization phase. So we take the IL and we, we do all sorts of uh, optimization. Uh, for example, one of them is uh, inline optimization. And uh, I will be explaining that on the board. And after that, uh, we generate uh, the native code uh, into, into native code or machine code for execution. And uh, the rest of this presentation is quite boring. <laughs> so I'll explain uh, what uh, the basic block is first, and then I'll explain what uh, inline optimization is. Uh, so here you have a basic block, and you have statements here. And in this basic block, you might have, say, a subroutine call, which calls another subroutine. And what inline optimization does is basically putting this subroutine into this main basic block instead of doing the call. So this would, would give us uh, more opt opportunities for optimization. And uh, if you have more calls, sometimes there's a, there's a cost to them. Uh, and you want to explain yeah. the uh, So a basic block might have uh, an instruction like uh, result equals uh, result equals a plus b times two. And so this is, this will be considered a tree talk. And this, uh, so it becomes a, the, the machine instruction is called like I store in this uh, sentinel result it comes from uh, this multiplying instruction which takes a constant to comes from uh, addition, which loads from memory the variable A and variable B. So each of these are nodes in the tree, and 
it goes up. So we build it up from the bottom up and keep building the result going up and use that as a basic plot. And having this tree structure allows for a lot of optimizations. Uh, for example, one of them is improve uh, inline optimization, which is a subject for uh, a research, I think, between uh, Dr. Ali and uh, IBM. Um, so basically, what we're going to do with the tree is we're going to build an interpreter that evaluates the range for, say, each variable. And based on that, we can fold branches or do um, other optimizations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll do a quick example of, of that. So, say we declare a variable thing if they equals, you know, some sort of input. And right now, our range for that is could be as little as a minute going to maximum. And that doesn't give us a lot of information other than it's an input. But if we go uh, for a equals zero, while it's less than 100 in a for loop, that gives us a lot more information. And we can, uh, based on conditions inside that loop, we can do some optimization. So for example, if for some reason uh, you decide to write an if a less than zero condition in there, even though it'll never execute, the compiler will automatically uh, take it out and remove that branch. So what yeah. we're doing is basically using the tree structure to predict the values for, for example, here, uh, the value of a. Since in the for loop, A's value can be larger than, um, can, can be less than zero, so we can fold this branch instead of just uh, evaluating it, with, uh, which would save some uh, uh, cost and improve performance. I think that's it.